Hello, my name is Jason. I'm a technician with Point Monitor. We're going to be talking about the building's fire alarm system today. The main control panel is in this room and it's got a lot of noise and electrical things going on, so we'll try and speak up as we go in. This is the fire alarm control panel for the building. Behind here is the, the brain of the system. All of the devices, detectors, and various parts of the fire alarm system report back to the circuit board that's behind here. Up here on the wall, what you're gonna see is a fire alarm communicator. This particular model is a Napco Starlink cellular dialer. And what this does is it takes all the signals capable of being generated by the panel and transmits them offsite to a remote monitoring station. Personnel at the remote monitoring station will respond to all of the signals generated by this panel and act accordingly, whether it's dispatching fire department or just contacting building maintenance to let them know about a trouble condition. There are three main types of signals capable of being transmitted by a fire alarm system. There's an alarm, which is actual life-threatening uh, conditions that need to be responded to. And then there are two other types of signals. There's what's called a supervisory and a trouble signal. Now, both of those are not necessarily of life-threatening conditions that are monitored, but instead different conditions that are existing on the system that may need to be addressed either by building maintenance or technician. And there's gonna be a display here that tells you specifically what that condition is, whether it's a fire sprinkler condition with water flowing, or if someone's activated a manual pull station, or if there's smoke smoldering in the building somewhere that's activated a smoke detector. All of those things are gonna be displayed here with a description of where in the building they're coming from. One of the components that we install in all of our new systems is a document enclosure. It contains typically the permits that were pulled for the electrical installation as well as manuals for the system. And in here we have built in a little memory drive that contains a file of the actual programming that's in the panel. The fire alarm control panel is serviced by a dedicated 120 volt AC circuit. It's indicated on the outside of the panel as to where the electrical panel and the breaker number is located and it happens to be right over here on the wall. Uh, we have a sticker on the outside so that it's easy to find in the event of an emergency and inside here you'll find that it's got a red marked breaker lockout that can be removed if needed. The fire alarm system is required by code to be battery backed up for a minimum of 24 hours and still be capable of going into a full state alarm at the end of that 24 hours for five minutes or more. This is done by using batteries that are housed inside this cabinet here that are calculated to run the system for that required amount of time. Some of the typical components you'll find in most fire alarm systems are things such as notification in the event of an alarm. This will help evacuate the building. This is a horn strobe on the ceiling here. Here's a sprinkler head as part of the automatic fire sprinkler system in the building, which our system monitors. Here is a typical smoke detector that we have throughout the building. It's a photoelectric smoke detector for detecting smoldering fires. And on the wall right next to it, you'll see a remote indicator. This is connected to another detector that's actually installed above the ceiling tile. If that detector senses smoke, the LED on this will light up, allowing people to locate it easier. If we go down this direction, down the hall, you'll see this area is under construction doing a remodel for a new office. You'll note that everything's taped off and nice and all the devices that are in the hallway here are still live and in place to protect the building and its occupants, such as the smoke detector right here. In the event that any work needs to be done, either on the fire alarm system or in areas that may create dust or debris that could affect the fire alarm system, it should be put on test with the monitoring organization. All that information should be clearly labeled on the outside of the panel so you know who to call, what the number is, and there's going to be an account number on there that they're going to ask you for so they know which building you're referencing. 